cry? Hello there, my movie loving peeps. Thank you so much for clicking on episode of Side Flick. My name is Chris. Let's talk about some movie news. Some of the stuff we're gonna be discussing here today, guys, is one, how Kevin Feige is finally all powerful again and regaining some control of the MCU. We got a Bambi horror movie in the works, I kid you not, guys. As well as even something I've been looking forward to, our first look to Transformers Rise of the Beast that lets us know what Optimus Primal is gonna be looking like. That along with so much more, so I'm gonna need you movie fans to give me your opinions down below with everything we discuss here today, as well as telling me which of these Funko Pops you're gonna be adding to your collection man we waited an entire year for these to finally come out and now that they're here man i can finally fulfill my collection fill the empty hole i have in my heart until another Funko Pop releases. As always, timestamps in the description, but diving straight into the movie news we got here today, let's start off with Kevin Feige regaining his power. So by now you might have heard that Disney has had a switch in CEOs going back to Bob Iger, the previous CEO that's made some of the biggest changes to Disney history. This is the man who's responsible for getting Disney Marvel, Star Wars, Fox, like he did so much for the company, it's kind of wild how one man stepped in and within two years, just kind of ruined a lot of that. And I was gonna make a side flick talking about this yesterday because I felt like there was just a bigger story here because Bob Chapek, the CEO, had like recently renewed his contract for Disney for another three years. Then out of nowhere, he gets fired on a Sunday night right before Thanksgiving. Like something went down behind the scenes that they're not telling us. And while I could go down the laundry list of things that Bob Chapek as a CEO has done to Disney that has made some people kind of unfavorable with the company, a lot of those things being changes to the Disney parks that have made some people very unhappy, but sticking to the movie side of things, this is the guy who put a lot of the Pixar movies for free on Disney+, Plus, then added bonus charges to some movies headed to Disney+, Plus. one that led Scarlett Johansson to sue Disney. I guess we can kind of thank him for wanting to add mature content to Disney+, Plus, which is something that was not gonna be possible with the previous management, Bob Iger, but he was mainly doing that because he did not believe in animation, which is like the thing that built Disney, which is probably why in the last two years, the animated movies that are coming out have gotten little to no marketing like strange world is coming out this friday i have not seen any marketing if this wasn't my job i would not know that movie's coming but one of the biggest changes that bob chapek made as soon as he became ceo is he created this middle management division that stopped kevin feige and other creative people at disney from having this power over their studio or department like they had before and then for the entirety of phase four kevin feige got a bit of a wall put on him had someone managing him someone he had to answer to and we don't know exactly some of the things that Kevin Feige was maybe not allowed to do or was not able to do in the MCU. A lot of those things were probably marketing. Back then, Kevin Feige would have a lot of say in what showed up in the trailers, what the posters were going to be. But now with that CEO out of the way and Bob Iger returning just for a two-year period while he gets a transition to get another CEO that'll hopefully follow in the same shoes of Bob Iger, have the same ideas of how to run the company. It's already being said here in an article that Iger has already asked a lot of the board members to work work together on the design of a new structure that puts more decision making back in the hands of our creative teams and rationalize costs. Iger said the goal is to have the new structure in place in the coming months. And that right there guys is exciting news for Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar, all these different studios that have had creative heads that then got these walls put in front of them that stopped them from doing a lot of things that they were already doing. Kevin Feige's power level is increasing and with Phase 4 over over and moving on to another phase I think it's a bright little future hopefully it stays that way when they switch CEOs but I thought this was something worth bringing up and letting you guys know because maybe it could explain some of the downfalls we've been having with Marvel the past year what do you guys think about Kevin Feige regaining his power moving on from there I can't believe it guys this is just becoming a new trend we are getting another childhood favorite character being turned into a horror movie exclusively revealed on Dead Central we have it Bambi becomes a vicious killing machine in new childhood rooting horror reimagining. It's going to be directed by Scott Jeffrey and it is also being produced by the same people who are making Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey, a movie that a lot of people are curious to see how it turns out. The director talks about what he's going to do with the film saying here, the film will be an incredibly dark retelling of the 1928 story we all know and love finding inspiration from the design used in Netflix's The Ritual. Bambi will be a vicious killing machine that lurks in the wilderness prepare for Bambi on rabies. Look guys, 
you know I'm the horror fanatic. I love me horror movies, but this is getting ridiculous. Now, you're obviously just doing it because it's a big trend. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey showed a lot of people in Hollywood that, hey, these public domain things that can be turned into horror movies, they get a lot of viral buzz. People talk about them on YouTube, TikTok. Let's just do it. Make a cheap movie that looks like it costs $50 and there'll be enough people that'll pay to see it. And sadly, I'm gonna be one of them. I wish that these upcoming childhood horror movies actually got decent budgets, like at least a Blumhouse budget of a $5 million movie. That would go a long way from like these $50 movies. Cause you know what? Maybe there is something actually dark you could tell with Bambi witnessing their mother die right in front of them and then they go, I'm gonna get my revenge and they go on revenge. It's kind of a dark story to begin with. So there's kind of something there you could do, but I just don't know how good it'll turn out. This is where I throw it off to you guys. Bambi is the latest character to become a horror icon. What do y'all think about that? Moving on from there, let's talk a little bit about Marvel because we just got some good news on the upcoming Blade movie. If you guys don't remember, the last we heard that the original director who was going to do the MCU Blade with Mahershala Ali had been fired because apparently the script he turned in was just not suitable or good enough for the MCU. This then delayed the movie all the way to 2024 and now we finally have here the new director going with Marvel Land's new Blade director with Love Country's Jan Demond. This person directed the first episode of Lovecraft Country which I did see and thought it was really good. More details given about this director choice goes as by having the extra time to meet with candidates, Marvel can now zero in on the writer and director who could deliver the tone they wanted to achieve with this film. While it probably won't be as dark as the previous Blade picks, insiders say Marvel is looking to go with a darker tone on this film than other MCU projects have in the past. I think that is just all around great news for Blade. They're going to go with a darker tone. Might not be as dark as the Wesley Snipe movies, but hey, it'll still be dark. Also, with a director on their hands, this movie can start moving forward. I think it's exciting news for now, especially when you pair that up with Kevin Feige getting some of that power back. Phase 5 is going to be looking awesome. What do you guys think about Blade finally finding its director and wanting to go with a dark tone? Another Marvel update we have here today is it looks like we have one of our first looks to the upcoming The Marvels. Thanks to a merchandise leak, we have here a look at Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau, and Miss Marvel herself, Kamala Khan. I know there might not be a lot of Marvel fans anticipating this movie, but looking at this image, it got me kind of hyped. I really enjoy Kamala Khan as a character and I want to see more of her and to now know she's going to interact with Captain Marvel and see Monica Rambeau in her brand new photon costume. Oh, she looks great. Hopefully she does a better job than her multiverse mother. And I'll tell you this, I was really upset that Miss Marvel was going to get a brand new costume for the Marvels when the last costume she had, she only wore for one episode, even though it was in all the marketing and the behind the scene photos of her new suit looked terrible to me. I thought they really ruined a great design here now with some visual effects added on color grading. You know what? It looks good. I'm okay with it. I kind of wish they would have kept the last costume for a little longer, but I'll be curious to see in the movie if they explain the slight suit change. Either way, I thought this was interesting to look at. What do you guys think of this first look at the Marvels? Something else I wanted to bring up here that was kind of blowing my mind. You guys know we're inching closer to Avatar 2 The Way of Water. Now I know you guys think I'm the Avatar hater on the channel. I am excited for this movie. I want to see it go down. In fact, now that I'm starting to see more trailers and TV spots pop up about this movie and still seeing how gorgeous gorgeous it looks, I can't wait to see it in 3D. I think I'm going to be in all of the whole situation. My only concern with Avatar was always, are people excited for a 10 year late sequel that is also planning to have five more sequels? That's all I've ever brought up. I don't hate the Avatar movies. And even James Cameron had brought it up that although he has plans for five Avatar movies, if Avatar 2 flops, he will then stop the franchise on the third movie. And now with this latest article, that's probably what's going to end up happening, y'all. Because Variety has it here reported that Avatar 2 is so expensive it must be the fourth or fifth highest grossing film in history just to break even. Just to get your money back on what you put into it, you have to be the fourth or fifth highest grossing movie of all time? That ah, wow. Now I'm not saying it's not possible. It's definitely possible. We still have the last Avatar movie as the highest grossing movie of all time. So there is at least a precedent that it could happen. But I feel like that is still an extremely high bar to reach. That means this movie has to for sure make $2 billion just to get its money back. And then if it even makes anything after that, there's your profit. Can you imagine spending $2 billion on a movie just to get a million dollar profit? 
Them blue people, man. So Avatar 2 is going to have to beat out Star Wars The Force Awakens or Avengers Infinity War and get that slot just for it to get its money back. And then anything after that is just pure profit. I'm not saying it can't happen, but I'm like, damn, that is a high bar. And if it doesn't meet that, then it's considered technically a flop because it didn't earn back its money that it was spent in. And that means we won't get the five Avatar movies we will end on Avatar 3. Look, I'm never someone to wish the downfall on a movie, so I I hope it makes it but man i want to know from you guys what do you think the likelihood is that avatar 2 could actually reach that peak of becoming profitable as well as do you yourself see the hype surrounding avatar around the general audience us movie fans are hyped but is everyone else hyped because we need everyone else's money all right moving on from there we finally got one of our first luck to transformers rise of the beast you guys know we've been getting small looks every now and then but one of the things i'm really looking forward to with this movie is a look at what the maximals or terracons are going to be looking like in this movie's with their animalistic features and here we go thanks to a mug that is leaked online some merchandise for this movie we have a look here at characters like optimus primal rhinox air razor and cheater and i am very satisfied with these designs you can obviously see their animalistic inspired side but the one i really wanted to see was this optimus prime ancestor optimus primal as a big giant ape and they are delivering. I think even if you look closely, you can see that they've added some fur to him. I was not expecting them to do that, but I kind of love it. I thought it was just mainly going to be a mechanical look, but if you really look at the forearms, you can see they've added some fur on it. I think that's a nice touch. Also really love the look at Air Razor here up top. I think these are actually pretty cool designs. Now, even though this is still our first look, it's still not the best look because it's coming off a shiny little mug. But either way, I still think it's a great look for them. I have not been this hyped for a Transformers movie since like Transformers 3. Now we just gotta wait to see what the remaining ones are gonna be looking like, the interactions they're gonna have with our Autobots in present day, how some of the time travel elements are gonna work like. I'm excited for this one. What do you guys think about these designs for Transformers Rise of the Beast? But that is all the movie news we currently have going on right now, guys. I wanna thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch me talk some movie news. Don't be forgetting to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chrissy Boo. Take care.